So I received a comment on my guide to the Origins creator, and originally I left a reply with a post to what my initial thoughts on the solution to the problem might be. That is, to dress a tamed wolf as a zombie, so that you could get the aggro and teleporting effects with the visuals of a zombie. However, I thought some more about the problem and decided it was interesting enough that I wanted to make a video on it. So welcome to the potential first of many in a series I will entitle Making Powers. I'll preface that I won't be making full origins, uh, rather individual powers that you can apply to your existing origins. So let's outline what exactly we need this power to do. So starting off, we need to be able to actually summon zombies in the first place. Next, we need to guarantee that these zombies don't want to eat us. No point being a summoner when you can't control what comes out. And to top it all off, we'll need these summons to actually work for us, uh, protect and serve, as it were. To get these undead up out of the ground and into our employ, you can use a command called uh, slash summon. Specifically, you can do slash summon zombie tilde tilde tilde. Tilde in these commands indicates a position, uh, specifically the X, Y, and Z axes, where you are currently standing. So the zombies will spawn on top of you. Unfortunately, they aren't friendly, so let's move quickly along to making them, uh, well, join our side. First, we need to create a team. You can use the power type action on callback, which lets you use the execute command power whenever you gain the origin power. This applies when you join the world, get the origin, etc. So we're going to be using the entity action added to get those effects. And specifically with the execute command function slash team add army. This will create a new team in the game entitled army, which we can later join. Also, add slash team leave at s for the entity action removed, so that if you ever swap origins or lose the effect or leave the world, this effect will take place. At s is a target selector variable, which in the game determines who receives the effect of a command. Specifically, at s only affects whoever casts the command. Uh, keep that in mind for later. So in this instance, whenever you lose the origin power, you will be removed from whatever teams you're a part of. With this, you now have a team created. So the next step is to actually get you and your summons on that team. Action over time makes the power run once every set amount of time. The default 20 ticks means it will run every second, which is enough for our purposes. You will need two functions for this to work. The first is slash team join army at s, which will put you on the team. And before we can write the second line of code, we need to add something to the summoning file. Change the code here to slash summon zombie tilde tilde tilde, and then we're going to add something relatively complicated. You're going to do curly brackets tags colon square bracket and then in quotations any name. I have chosen Z tame to indicate that they are tamed zombies. Then you do a close bracket and a close squirrely brackets. Now, tags are a system used to group things in Minecraft, such as blocks that can be mined with a pickaxe, and they're generally used throughout the game's code. This command manually assigns one to the zombies that we summon. That way they can be affected by our future coding, which we will return to now. Go to your current file and write the second line of code as such, slash team join army at e open brackets type equals minecraft colon zombie comma tag equals z tame close brackets. This command is more complicated, so let's break it down. At e indicates that the command will affect an entity, and according to the Minecraft wiki, an entity is every moving dynamic object in the Minecraft world. The square brackets following the at e symbol mean that you are narrowing what type of entity to target with this command. So rather than any entity, you are specifically choosing zombies with the tag Z tame. Now, whenever you summon a zombie, it will have the tag, which will then make it a target of the action over time effect, which adds that specific entity to your team. This means that they will not be hostile towards you. With this done, we can now move on to the third and final step making our summon zombies attack both people we hit and those who would dare to hit us. Fortunately enough, the same three lines of code will achieve both of these results. However, before we create this, return the original team creation file, add another execute command entity action, make both the team army and the team enemy. Now create two files, one with target action on hit and another with attacker action when hit which will serve as our offensive and defensive powers respectively. Both of these files make your target entity, I mean the one you want dead, perform an entity action. What this means is that any commands will be executed by them, which
which is what makes this process work. You will have them execute three commands. First, slash team join enemy at s. This will make the target you want attacked join the opposing team of the army. This will be followed by slash execute at at e open brackets tag equals z tame close brackets run summon arrow tilde tilde 2.3 tilde curly bracket motion colon open bracket 0 negative 1 0 close bracket comma damage colon 0 comma life colon 1200 0, 0, close curly brackets and finally, slash data modify entity at e open bracket type equals arrow comma limit equals one close bracket owner set from entity at e open bracket team equals enemy comma limit equals one close bracket UUID. These are complicated and will work regardless of whether you understand them. But if it interests you, I will try to briefly explain the process I'm making use of here. Slash execute is a command used to run other commands from different sources or locations. In this specific scenario, from an entity with the tag z tame. This is followed by the command we want to run there, slash summon, to create an arrow at the same x and z location as the zombie, but 2.3 above it on the y. That is, we summon an arrow above the zombie to fall on its head. Then we assign it motion and damage values to make it travel directly downward and deal no damage to the zombie. The following command instantly changes the identity of the arrow so that it belongs to the target who in the first line of code joined the team enemy. This code changes the origin of the arrow to make it belong to that creature. So the process goes like this. I hit a pig. The pig becomes part of the team enemy. An arrow instantly falls on the zombie, which the zombie thinks the pig shot at it, so the zombie attacks the pig. The way this works is by taking advantage of the zombie's innate aggro mechanics, the same ones that make a zombie attack a skeleton if you get the zombie shot by them in survival mode. Now I can uh, demonstrate the same process I just explained within the game, which means that our code has worked as intended. And I must admit it's really fun to watch these things go and just attack whatever you send them off to do. Um, I also point out that this does work with groups, meaning that you can get your entire army to target the exact same creature. Uh, but all the same, there you have it. Hopefully this helps anyone looking for a power like this to add to their origin. Uh, the only other comment I'll add is where I would take this power. First, I would link it to a resource. That way it could only be used a certain number of times. I'm thinking three would be reasonable to start with. And, and then you can make it so that you recharge the resource by killing mobs. That way you can build an army at will and without time constraints, but it's still somewhat balanced. Anyhow, let me know your thoughts and if there's any other effects you'd like to see me to create. And yeah, I'm done here.